Hi, this is Nikolai from Bunker Samples, and this is Intimate Viola Iremia. So before I founded Bunker Samples, I was actually a professional violist. I worked in a bunch of different orchestras in Scandinavia mostly for about 10 years. Now there is a sound that I have lived with almost my entire life, and that is the sound of the viola right under my ear. When your ear is that close to the instrument, you hear all the bow noise, all the little imperfections that make it sound human, and they kind of have an emotional quality to them. What's interesting about these sounds is that they stand out far more the quieter, the softer you play. So the idea was to create a solo viola library focused just on quiet sounds and really explore them in depth. Now, conventional wisdom when you record string instruments is that you want to put the mic quite far away from the instrument. You don't want to hear all that bow noise. You want the sound to gel together in the room. But I wanted to go in the opposite direction. In fact, I wanted to put the mic as close as my left ear is to the instrument, because I want you to hear that sound that I had lived with for my entire life. In the end, I actually went a bit further than that, because uh, I began wondering, what does it actually sound like inside the instrument? So I made this little contraption that let me float a tiny Omni mic inside the viola, and as you'll see, it's a glorious sound. In fact, you get five my perspectives in this library and three of them are close. So you have inside, super close, close, and then two more conventional perspectives, mid and far. But we'll get to that. Let's hear some sound first. Here are Sustains Normal, triple P. And if I play that higher. So I hope you can hear all the details I'm talking about. There's a lot of bow noise. You can hear the bows bouncing slightly on the string. I, I just love that sound. Of course, we have dynamic control as well. This is the main pad. It contains all the 21 core sounds in the library. The sounds can roughly be divided into static sustains. You have three of those with three variations of each and some harmonics. And then we have a bunch of textures. The sustains all come in three different dynamic variations. So they have the softest, then you have a pianissimo. And then the loudest of the sustains, which is still a very soft sound. Now to play quiet on a string instrument, obviously you can just play very quiet, but you can also add a mute. That is why every single articulation in this library comes in a normal version, referred to as normal, and a muted version, 
referred to as CS, which stands for Considino, Italian for with mute. So here are the sustains Considino. And as for all the sustains, you have a slightly louder version of that. And the loudest version. For the sustains, I recorded two different kind of mutes actually. I also have a practice mute. These are normally made of metal and sound very ugly, but this one made of rubber has a very interesting almost hollow sound. And this is by far the quietest sound in the library. Of course, it also comes in a pianissimo version. And the loudest version of that sound. Now, all the sounds in the main pads, as you can probably guess, are just a single dynamic layer. So, you have a few options for controlling what happens when you move this slider, the dynamic slider. It comes mapped to CC1 by default. And if you click here, you get a few settings. These are intensity sliders. This controls the intensity of the simulated dynamics. This controls the dynamic range and velocity control. If we turn all of them off, nothing happens. When I move the slider. If I turn this on, that activates a single band EQ under the hood. And you can determine how much you want of that. So basically it makes the sound darker when the slider is in the lower position and it makes it brighter when it's in the higher position, just like a real instrument. If we turn that all the way up to 100%, you get this. Let's turn that up for a second and listen to what the dynamic range slider does. This basically determines how much the dynamic slider affects the volume. So it's a basic volume control. So if we turn it all the way up, you'll hear what it does. This together with the simulator dynamics. So as you can hear, even though these sounds are a single dynamic layer, they can be quite expressive. And you can dial in just how expressive you want them. Velocity control determines how much velocity affects the starting volume of a note. Right now, no matter how soft or hard I play, everything starts at the same volume. But if we turn this up, and I hear the key soft, or hard. So this is of course great if you want to make a certain note in a chord louder than the others, the top line, for example. You can close this again by clicking here, or of course you can click on the X. The expression slider is basically just a secondary volume control, so that can increase the dynamic range a lot if we use both of these. It comes mapped to CC11 by default, but you can change that by right-clicking. Let's listen to some of the textures. These are Bow Pulse's Concertino. Here is the normal version of that. Vibrato Pulses, one of my favorite articulations, 
basically playing a very soft static non vibrato note then I'm adding these little pulses and vibrato at the same time. All these textural articulations are improvised, so for some of them I'm holding the static note a bit longer, some of them have more pulsing going on. So the idea is that if you're holding a chord, you're always getting something that's sticking out at randomly timed intervals. So you can hear it's always a different note that's poking out a little bit of the chord and these samples are about 16 seconds long so it takes a long time before the loop around. The normal version of that. Random Rebo is basically just a data shape where I'm playing randomly. Of course that also comes in a normal version. Tremolo Burst Concertino, you might recognize this articulation from Bunga Strings Volume 2, but here it is in a solo version, which was very much requested. So as you can hear, I'm holding a static note and then adding these random bursts of very fast tremolo. The normal version of that. Fluctuating trem is basically a tremolo, but it sort of goes in and out of tempo from very slow tremolo to very fast tremolo. that comes in normal version too. Finally we have some harmonics which I guess is more of a sustained type articulation. And the normal version of that. Let's talk a bit about the features now. You have standard attack decay sustained release control, and you can see here exactly how what the value is. Align S start stands for align sample start. When you record something with mics at varying distance. Obviously the sound is going to hit the mic furthest away later. 
and this can cause phase cancellation, which most of the time is kind of pleasant. You want to preserve that time relationship between the different signals. What this button does, if you turn it on, is it adjusts the start time of all the mics further away to the inside mic, which is obviously the closest one to the source. Basically phase aligning everything to the inside mic. This creates a much darker sound, so this button is basically a sound variation. Here the uh, phase align is turned off. If we turn it on, you'll hear it's a much darker sound. Turn it off again, play the same thing. So it's basically a tone variation control between bright and dark without using any EQ. So let's talk about the mic positions. So we have solo and mute buttons here. And let's start with the inside, the main selling point of this library. What's surprising about this mic is that it has a lot of bone noise in the sound. Let's hear something without mute on that. Let's hear Bow Pulse's Consadino. I thought the inside of the instrument would sound more like a sine wave, but you actually get a lot of the bow noise and detail in the sound as well. It's a great signal for basically fattening up the sound if you want. It makes everything darker. The Super Close is the mic that I personally start all my mixes from, and then I add the other mics to taste. It is two Aston mics placed right above the viola, as close as I can get them, about 25-30 centimeters, with the left mic pointing towards the lower strings and the right mic points towards the higher strings. It sounds like this. I just love that sound. Now, because the mic is so close, if I move just five centimeters to the side, it can affect the uh, stereo image uh, quite a bit. So let's talk about the options you have for each mic. You have a stereo riff control, drag right to make it wide. But for this mic in particular, it's often useful to make it a little bit narrow. Or you can make it completely mono. To reset, you command and control click, and now the signal is exactly as it, as it was recorded. You also have individual delay and reverb sense. And what's great about having these sends on the individual mics, and my personal favorite thing to do is, if we go to the far mic, Add just a little bit of delay sent on that and keep all of the other mics as they are. So adjust to taste, of course, but this is a great way to add a bit of background sheen while keeping that uh, close and intimate sound front and center. When you're adjusting multiple mics, you don't have to close the window first. You can just go through like this. And of course, the inside mic has no stereo riff control because it's a mono signal. The final thing to talk about in the mic settings is that you can route each mic individually to contacts outputs here. And if you're not seeing the output you want, you add your output here. Let's add one. So now we add a stereo four, but we are not seeing it here. Well, what you do is you go up and restart contact by clicking the exclamation mark here. 
and now Stereo 4 is there. The benefits of doing this is of course that you can have each individual mic on its own track in your DAW so you can use your own effects on them and uh, mix directly in your session. The close mic is a more standard perspective, uh, Norman U87 and two 184s on the side, it's about a meter away. The mid perspective is two AKG 414s in the middle of the room and they can add quite a bit of depth and distance to the sound. Finally we have the far perspective, that is two uh, Telefunken M60s right at the back of the room and very wide apart. So they add a good amount of depth but also width to the signal. Let's try something different for this one. So that was the main patch, let's now look at some of the other patches. Concertino Internormal Crossfade, this pretty much does what it says on the tin. Of course crossfading from a muted sound into a non-muted sound is not possible in real life, but that's the beauty of sampling. On this patch the dynamic slider becomes a crossfade, where you can go from the muted sound into the non-muted sound. Of course you still have all the dynamic settings, so you can add a bit of artificial high frequency boost and cut, you can adjust the dynamic range, and there we get this. The slightly louder version of that. Of course in this pad, since you're crossfading, when the fade is in the middle you are hearing 50% of both sounds and that can cause some phasing sometimes. There's not a whole lot uh, I can do about that, I just want to mention it because it's the nature of the beast. I also made some super concertino into normal concertino. A surprisingly expressive sound, and the loudest. Of course you also get all the textures, the bow pulses. The vibrato pulses. Rebo. Tremolo bursts. Fluctuating tremolo. And finally harmonics. The dynamic sustains is another crossfade pad. It basically takes uh, the three dynamic variations of each of the three sustain types and uh, crossfades between them. Of course, again, 
when you're overlapping nodes, you can get some facing, but I tried to make the crossfade as smooth as possible. Now, because of the way it was recorded, you will hear uh, quite a change when you go from one layer to the next, but this is a quick way of moving between the layers and then you can use the expression slider for controlling dynamics. Sustains Considino. And finally, the Super Considino. You also get a selection of recorded swells, and these were all recorded in one bow stroke, so there is no bow chains at the top of the swell. You select the length with these buttons, one, two, three, or four seconds. And it's worth noting that the length refers to how long it takes for the swell to reach the peak. So the two second swell takes two seconds to go up in volume and then two seconds to go down. So it's actually four seconds in total. And then you select the articulation over here. Now is also perhaps a good time to mention that you can select everything in this library with key switches. And this pad in particular has, of course, two key switches. The red key selects the length and the green key switches changes the articulation. You have three articulations. You have a normal, you have a concertino, and then you have a tremolo concertino. Let's hear the two second ones. Same thing, Considino. I find these very, very useful. Here is the one second version. the normals. Let's take the longest one. A tip I like to do sometimes with these is to not play them all at the same time. You can sort of stack them with the sustain pedal. We have already talked about the delay and reverb sense, but I haven't shown you how to access the settings. It's very simple. You click here. The delay is Native Instruments Replica Delay, which I absolutely love. Um, if you want to read more about all the things you can do, I recommend reading the contact manual. But basically you have five different modes here. Diffusion is particularly beautiful. So let's go back to the main and let's send a little bit of the mid and far to the delay, and now we have this. And another thing worth mentioning is that the time knob can be in milliseconds or you can sync it to host tempo. So now the delay time is three eight notes. And here you have a selection of a few holes, a lot of plates, and then some special effects. Low and high cut, pre-delay, I hope that's self-explanatory, but it sounds like this.
So even though this is primarily an acoustic virtual instrument, you can do a lot of interesting stuff with the uh, delay settings. Finally, I should mention that the swells also come in a Time Machine Pro version, which adds this time stretch slider here. But I recommend using this with caution and it's not 10%, so you're going to have to use your ears. But you can stretch the sound to about 75% of the original speed or up to 130%. Here's the original. If we make that slower. Even slower. You can hear this is where it starts to sound a little bit funny with the vibrato. If we take the two seconds, this is what it sounds like normally. If we make that quicker. Still usable, but you can hear uh, with the vibrato, it gets a little bit of a chipmunk quality. So one of the things I'm thinking about for the next release is to uh, do a swells library and record at every five or 10 BPM and so everything can temper sync and still sound natural. And that is Intimate Viola Iremia. I think it's the best thing Bunga Samples has made yet. Um, I know I said that about Bunga Strings Volume 2 and I'm a developer and yada yada, but I really do think it is an incredible, useful library with a sound that you're just not going to get anywhere else. Anyway, I hope that was useful um, and I hope you get to enjoy the library. I hope you have a great day and uh, see you on the next one. Bye bye.